And welcome back. Today we are flying out the Saar for the Israeli Tech Tree. I have no idea how to pronounce it correctly, but that's what my cat is called, so I'm gonna call it the Saar. And just like my cat, this plane is pretty good at dying. And that's actually the reason I am flying this thing out. My cat that was 18 years old just passed away in my arms, so I'm feeling a bit sentimental. I'm feeling a bit sad, so I decided why not fly something that reminds me of a... I just, ha I am highly motivated right now to fly out this vehicle and... Trust me, it's not because of the performance, the missiles, the guns, or anything else. It's literally the name. That's the only real thing that I have going for it here. Because this plane is absolutely atrocious. I'm pretty sure my cat is a better plane than this thing and she's under the ground right now. But this plane, the Saar, in an 8.0 down here, it's actually kind of okay. If you take the Super Mystere and you give it a better engine for lower speeds... That's what you get here. So you lose the top speed acceleration. You lose the absolute top speed. But when it comes to like sub 800-ish kilometers an hour acceleration. It's actually better. The issue is that the Super Mysteer is notoriously bad when it comes to energy retention. So this thing will not hold any speed. And it will just hold else. And that's kind of the issue here. Because you don't have the same top speed as the Super Mysteer B2. The issue with that is if you are faster, if you have more speed, you can avoid fights. You don't have to take them, you can just straight line out of it. It also means you have more speed to burn in the initial fight. This thing will retain its energy better at lower speeds because the engine is just better. The issue is you are forced more into those fights more often. And that's what you want to avoid in this thing. So it's kind of, um, it remedies a problem that was less of an issue in the other one. Yes, it's better when it comes to the, the shit hits the fan scenarios, but you're going to get more of those scenarios. So is that worth a trade-off? I don't think so. Can I do anything about it? Well, no, not particularly. You just have to take your fights, pick your fights especially, and make sure that you engage the right people. You do not want to get into a furball. You do not want to start dogfighting most of the enemy main fighters. You can dogfight the A4Es, for example, and the other attackers. But when you start dogfighting stuff like sabers, mix and all that good stuff, you are completely screwed. And the issue is, you can't run away from them either. So they decide when you get to fight them, which mostly means they start on your 6. The only real quote-unquote positive about this thing is, you slow down so quickly and you have pretty decent nose authority, you can try to get a one-turn reversal, a one-turn shot. The issue is... Well, this right here. I'm just going to let you watch it. I don't really have to say anything here. And yes, this was after they fixed gun damage. So, the guns are absolutely atrocious. Which is fantastic. This thing really relies on getting that one shot in and downing your enemy. And if you miss that shot, or in this case if you hit it, but you might as well have missed because it doesn't do any damage. Then you are completely, utterly screwed. I hope it's starting to sink in. The Shafir 2s are actually quite okay. You saw that they, they have quite a good seeker. It's very sensitive. Do be careful with the sun, however, if it's basically anywhere near the 50% middle of the circle. The big circle, I mean. Uh, it will pick up the sun. This also goes for flares and stuff. If the enemy is flaring, you can basically forget it. Luckily at this BR, people aren't that vigilant when it comes to missiles. There we get another hit with the 30mm. I have been getting quite a few hits. I haven't only flown this thing. I've flown a couple of planes with the Aidens, Defas and Akens alike. And they just do nothing. It doesn't really matter what angle, how fast they are going. If they're even dodging you. They just do not die. And it's absolutely infuriating. But really, this plane is just a massive L. There is really no good reason to fly it. I mean, look at this right here. He's basically stalled out. I hit a few rounds. These are 30 millimeters, and it just does absolutely nothing. Now, I, I crit him. He's now basically floating in the air, and he's completely dead. So I'm just going to go on and go for the A4E. And as you might notice, you can see where the A4E is going. And this is, of course, after they kind of fixed Airfield AA again. So people just, they just beeline it back to it. And it's just... I don't get why you're playing the game if you're just going to run back to the airfield. But we've been over this topic a plethora of time already. And I'm not going to do that once more. At least not today. 
So we are going to try to chase this guy down. And his high speed acceleration is even worse than ours will be. And we also got an hit on him. Now I'm not sure if I actually did significant damage. If I even did any damage whatsoever. Or if he has like a slightly yellowish wing route or something like that. It might decrease his top speed by like 5 kilometers an hour. But in the end it's really not going to make much of a difference. We are reeling him in. But as always you start getting close enough the second they get within AA coverage so you're just forced to break off and otherwise you're going to eat a roll into the face and I'm not exactly looking forward to that I hit more rounds and that just means we do more a whole lot of nothing so he just goes RTB and he's gonna land now and I want to turn around for the other A4E here because he is relatively slow he has gun pots on and his performance is completely gimped and I'm going to get a very easy shot here but unfortunately we are so busy crying about a cat that I can't see my enemy and we whiff all our shots and he then of course does the... Uh, oh, do I really have to explain it? He just turns back to the airfield because that's all people do. We are forced to go back to the airfield because we are low on fuel. And I suddenly hear another jet. It's the B-57. So we are going to fly up and over. If he chases us then I can very easily reverse him. We still have a decent amount of speed left. And we are just going to slot onto a 6. Look at my energy by the way. It just disappeared. We now go into a little bit of a dive. We do regain quite a bit of it. We just want to move as little as possible. The issue is I only have 60 rounds. And I say only. And that's because well. This right here. So we hit him with basically all the 32 rounds that I just shot. I almost got team killed. So I try to break off. He hits like 1 or 2 shells on the B57. And guess what. Because I'm not allowed to have nice things today. I'm going to get the assist for that one as well. Then we take back off and the A3 that we hit multiple times before with about 8 shells in total. That landed and repaired is now flying above us. So we just kind of pitch up for him. I don't want to send it instantly. I want to get a little bit behind him which is why I'm flying not at him but kind of behind him. Gives the missile a little bit of an easier time especially in the locking department. That's going to curve in. It's going to slam him out of the air and I hope that this one game gives you enough of an idea of why I don't want to fly it anymore. But because I absolutely loathe my life right now, why not continue to feel despair? Here's the thing that I meant with the sun. The sensitivity of this seeker is just extremely high. You see, if I go to a little bit to the left, I said 50%, it's more like 80. The missile seeker will find the sun and it will be distracted. The seeker is pretty good. It's a borderline all aspect. It's not like an A9L or anything. And you won't get actual head on aspects. But the side aspect is still pretty damn decent. Which makes it, well, pretty reliable to get kills with. I'm going to show you one here. MiG-15, he doesn't really see it. But I mean, the missile has pretty good range. It tracks quite well. It's not an A9J. But it's pretty damn decent, especially the range of this BR. So we're going to fire the missile onto this guy as well. And just like that, we get another kill. IL-28 is flying ahead of us. And you can see that basically on the 90 degree mark, if you go over it, your missile will be able to track. It was the same thing with the B-57 at the start of the video, as well as the other guy that we missile in the previous clip. F-84F, I mean, absolute joke of a vehicle. We get crit in, doesn't really do any damage. And we can't really chase him. We will lose too much speed. And speed is just something you don't have a lot of. And if you do have a lot of it. I mean you're not going to have it for very long. It's basically like getting your salary at the end of the month. And then seeing the new prices with inflation for a piece of bread. You are just instantly broke. You get a little bit of a spike after a dive for example. But just everything costs speed in this thing. And you can tell that how slowly I'm trying to turn around. And I'm still bleeding speed Anyway, if I make the loops too big and actually hold my speed, it will take me so long to get back into the action that my battle presence is basically zero. So I want to be at least a little bit there and I want to help my team out a little bit because this thing is not going to be carrying anything on its own. Shoot a missile at the MiG-17, he actually sees it, he pulls in and we get behind him. And because we lose so much speed, we just get on him just like that. We hold the trigger, we get another bunch of hits. And we need to dive out. I'm already going 470. And I have some altitude still. And I need to get away from this furball right now. I do not want to hang there. I do not want to stay there and be slow. Because you basically have to plan 2 minutes in advance in this thing. Because if you don't you get someone on your 6. And if someone starts running you down. You are completely boned. There is just nothing you are going to be doing. If people start reeling you in. You don't really have the top speed to get away from them. And even if you did have the top speed. The acceleration just 
is not there and it is gonna leave you behind it is gonna leave you frustrated for more and this thing is just an extremely sad vehicle does it have real strength it's going to be the two aim nine or the two chiffre twos but that's really where the advantages end at 9.0 there are just so many better vehicles that can do this job but just much better so there really isn't much to say about it you just want to play around the game you want to see how it develops and you want to just make sure you do your thing before your team collapses and if and if you have a really good team you just get to do literally nothing and then these guns are absolutely bipolar they do nothing for the last five games and then they will absolutely nuke another one makes no sense the issue is you just can't rely on them sometimes they'll do fantastic damage and sometimes you'll get to see what happened to that F9F that I shot at the start of the video. They're just super unreliable. And when you have a vehicle that relies on that mistake on the enemy. That mistake where they maybe mess up and you get that one turn to get your guns on. If it then doesn't actually kill them. You're just completely done. Unless they completely mess up. They don't know your vehicle. And they try to extend away from you because they notice that you're going slower than them. And a lot of people, well, that's the one advantage of this. It goes slower than people and they have a hard time shaking you off. They think that you are actually outturning them. They get scared of the fight. And they might actually break off, run away or whatever they are doing. And they might give you another shot that way. But that just completely relies on the fact that the enemy does not know your vehicle. And they kind of panic. If they don't panic, if they know this thing, you're going to have a bad time. Not to speak about the rudder. Anyway, Seahawk, I'm on there. Six. I shoot a few rounds. I crit him. No damage again. And I cannot fight this guy. I'm only going 700 right now. It's way too slow. I break off. Takes about half a minute. Then we start turning around again. And because he's crit and he's not too fast. And the Seahawk isn't that fast to begin with. We can now go head on with him. And the issue here is he's very slow. He's desperate. He will send it in the head on. So I need to go defensive in the head on as well. And that's going to cost me a lot of speed. Luckily we crit him. Looks like we did pretty severe damage to him. He's having a very bad time staying in the air. We can loop on and over. We get on the 6. I'm not going to send that fight. Because that's going to make us overshoot basically. So I'm going to wait a little bit. And then turn behind him. Now he's way too slow to do anything. We are closing the loop here. And he's just too slow to dodge us. And he flies through our guns. So we shoot off his wingtip. And we go to the next victim. I say cope to a TU4 that gets missiled after shit talking the entire match. And then the IL-28 sees us and tries to turn around. Luckily, we have Shafrias. And this is why I like these missiles at this BR. Because IL-28s and just stuff with gunners are just extremely annoying to deal with. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.